What up guys? Joe DeSoulis here. Um, just out practicing some survival training. Today I'm going to be working on a couple things. Number one will be uh, making a survival still with uh, foliage as well as urine. Uh, I'm going to be working on making cordage. I'm also going to be working with snares and uh, trying to figure out different uses of plants and stuff like that. So just a couple hours out in the woods. I tried to avoid some uh, poison ivy while digging that still, but apparently I hit a little bit. Got some on the hands. Really not much you can do once that happens, but just kind of washing them. Get some sediment in there, cold water. You never want to use warm water. But uh, so right now I'm going to try the, uh, the urine still. This one will be pretty similar, except for I pee on the leaves and there's more moisture to be evaporated by the sunlight. So I want to find a sunnier area and we'll see how that goes. See how this goes, man. Basically, it smells kind of like wild men around here somewhere. There's some of these in there. Boom. Now, push this all the way in. Good. This is the wrapping of my camera. I like to use head to not trap around it. As much dirt as you can. See how that goes. Just cover it up so locals don't find it. See how it goes tomorrow. I'll come check it out. What up guys? So the next thing I'm going to teach you is uh, making cordage. Let's try that again. Wait for this plane to go by. So next thing I'm going to be working on is making cordage. In survival situations, idle hands are the work of the devil. You get you panic about stuff, you, you, you should always be working on something, no matter what it is, whether you're in your camp, whether you're hunting, whether you're trying to get water. One of the things you can do for downtime to keep your mind off of how crappy the situation is, is make cordage. So that, I just, I made this myself. It actually is really strong and doesn't break that easily. You could probably use it for snares, use it for a bowstring if you get good enough wood. You get, uh, you get a lot of stuff, man. Uh, not all the time when you're in the woods is you're gonna have your 550 cord. That stuff's the strongest and most preferred, but if you don't have it, you gotta figure out how to get by with it, you know? So what I did when I was walking in, I, I found some, I believe these are milkweed plants. And the bark, the bark for these comes off relatively simple and it stays on there really good. So, see that? Boom. That's bark. It's already kind of strong. I'm gonna take off these these leaves. I'm gonna add this to my uh, collection here. So really, uh, you can do this whenever you want. I was sitting here earlier, and two deer ran up right on me. You can be really still. You can do this while you're hunting. It's a great thing to multitask. You would not. I would not recommend eating this. Tastes very poisonous. So you find the bark. Comes off really easily like this. You see that? It has a weird stench to it. That's a pretty good amount of cordage right there. Look at that. Pretty long piece, right? It's really what I, I learned with making cordage is you want to 
clamp it down one piece a little longer than the other. Okay. Want to twist away, go underneath. Twist away, go underneath. Twist away, underneath. Twist away, go underneath. Twist away, go underneath. Hmm. Now I'm at the point to where you want to link more cordage together. So, I'm going to try it out with this one. Right here. Boom. You just kind of add this to it. Just like this. You actually want to link it in to here. You just keep doing it like you were doing it before. Twist it up. Amazing how well, if you stay still, you don't get noticed as long as the wood, the uh, sorry, as long as the uh, wind is in your favor. That's what I love about hunting. So many things will not notice you. All right, I've been working for a little over an hour now. I made a pretty solid piece of cordage. Because it it's pretty long, too. Very strong. Didn't take that long. I could have done it while I was hunting. But, uh, yeah, I mean, I can keep going, keep adding to it if I want to. But, yeah, it's a solid, solid piece of, you know what I mean? Probably not, like I said, not as good as your uh, 550 cord. But uh, it's decent stuff, so let's see if we can make any snares and snag some rabbits or something like that. So to me, this looks like a little rabbit hole. Come in and out of this hole. Looks like it comes in here, down and around and follows this under here. Looks like a well used path that goes under here over here. So this is actually a pretty good spot to try my trap. So when you're uh, you figured out where the rabbits are kind of moving around or the critters you want to hunt, you gotta establish your kill zone. Where can I canalize these and get them to go where I want them to go. So I believe he's going to come around this log under there and I think he's going to go through. And I believe this is a good spot. I think he's going to come under here. So what I've done is I dig a small hole and then I have two branches I put in the ground with these little forks. And what I'm going to do is use this tree as the spring for the trap. Just gonna bend down, use the, the torque of this tree to keep the trap springed with my cordage. I'm gonna be able to snare something. When I'm done, I'm gonna make sure I close off all of the routes so he's not encouraged to go a different way. So he'll be forced to come right through here. So, we'll see how it goes. Well, as strong as it is, my cordage broke with the tension of this branch. There's some strong cordage to be able to pull that down, even with that. But how tight I had it is you want it really tight. So either A, I have to find a different source for the snare, which cordage would be kind of hard to use. You could do it if you had strong enough cordage, but because of the braid system, it's going to be hard for the new system to slip and catch. But like I said, this, this, this rope I made is pretty strong. 
I made this and it's doing this and not even breaking. But, you know, it was one of my first ones and I hadn't been able to mess around with it as much, but I'll try it with my regular paracord and see how that goes. So as you can see, there's a trigger, there's a noose trigger mechanism down there when the animal steps on the stick it's going to trigger the trap so I'll be an example I'll show you an example of this before my camera dies caught on there so just from my first test I should probably uh, make a little more tightness on it because I want this thing hanging from the tree dangling to where it's going to die but that's generally the idea how you do it you want to put bushes around here so it funnels them through and make it very sensitive so where it even touches it I this is my first try with it recently so I wasn't able to really get it going good but that's how you make a uh, snare I'm not sure the name of it I learned it from the ranger handbook